Welcome to Modern Entrepreneur. Today we have Rachel Schnorr, Joseph Hall, Christine Mims, Holly, Carla Johnson, Elliot, Amy Hamilton, and Mr. Gard. Welcome to Modern Entrepreneur. I'm Landon, and this is Jamie Kaliri. He is a director whose recent animated films have garnered an Emmy and three Annie Awards, among others. In 2015, he directed the stop motion sequences in The Little Prince. Uh, jumping between animation to live action, he took on music videos in the late 90s, including Marcy Playground's Sex and Candy, Morphine's Early to Bed, which earned him a Grammy nomination for Best Music Video. In 2008, he and his brother Diami, Diami founded DZ Systems. They produce uh, Dragon Frame animation software, which is used to, film, to shoot such films as Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs, which is a pretty weird and cool film. Um, thanks for being here. Hey, thank you. Thanks yeah, for having me. This is so, so cool. So um, tell me what you're up to these days. Well, these days, um, I'm keeping the software going with my brother. Mm -hmm. we, we keep it rolling, keep it updated, uh -huh. and make sure that the professionals out there are you know, getting the tools they need. Mm -hmm. I also have a, a company that makes um, motion control systems to move cameras through mm -hmm. miniature sets. So that's another uh, venture of mine. Miniature sets. Well, yeah. like, like stop motion For sets. Stop motion sets, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a robotic system that moves the camera in synchronous with the shooting. Awesome. And so you got these, these are two like going businesses that you manage? Yeah, Dragon Frame is very well established. Uh -huh. um, the other company, which is called Arc Motion Control, is sort of an up and coming company. Uh huh, cool. And, um, and so you run those on a day to day basis and you're selling that stuff to studios and supporting it and getting people on board. Um, very interesting. So um, you've been at this for a while, it sounds like. Yeah, we, yes, we've been doing Dragon Frame for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And my brother and I started it uh, very simply and we just let it slowly kind of grow organically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's used for, nowadays, most of the time, if you see a music video or a commercial or a title sequence or a movie that is stop motion, chances are it's shot with our software. Stop motion. Um, so stop motion is anything with, with miniatures and, yeah. and, and it's animation that's camera based. So if you have mm -hmm. a camera mm -hmm. and you're filming something and you're moving things around, yeah. that would be stop motion. Yeah. And then your software kind of like puts all those frames together and manages how that all works. Yeah. It does a few different things. It mm -hmm. does, uh, for the animator, it gives them a, a workspace to kind of, as they're animating, to see the progress as they're going. Uh -huh. And it keeps all the sound synchronous so that they can hear the sound in sync with what they're doing. Oh, wow. Um, also, animators will bring in a lot of video reference, and they they'll have they can put that on the screen as they're working, and and see, you know, maybe they've made a little film of themselves acting something out. And they can reference that yeah. as they're going, and then it also has other workspaces that really unify the stage setting. So, once you start shooting stop motion, let's say you've got lights that are changing or are fading in and out. Mm -hmm. um, Dragon Frame, you can program the lighting in there, and then that keeps it synchronous with the shooting. Mm -hmm. And then it can also control motion control. So through the software, you can control robotic arms, and, and that can be moving the camera through. So everything is kept locked into the frame. Mm -hmm. So if the animator is going along and they go, oh, I've made a mistake, they can you know, back up and delete a couple frames, and everything will everything move back in synchronous crazy. with them. And there's a workspace for the cinematographer, so they can really get their alignment and their lighting right and take time to m maybe look at what they're shooting now versus what was shot on another stage uh -huh. but has to match up yeah. and they can get all the lighting you know set up that way and so it's uh, it's actually got like four or five workstations within it but once you start shooting it all kind of locks together yeah awesome so um, you know speaking about your your own entrepreneurial journey because that's what we're uh, focused on here at Entreport yeah um, you started this business in what year? 2008. 2008. So it's a decade, um, and uh, sounds like um, sounds like it's basically the industry standard. At it this is point. now. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah I can say that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how long how long have you been able to say that? Do you think? You know, probably about five years. Uh huh. Halfway through. Right. Amazing. So um, so if you could like go back in time and give your startup startup self a, a bit of advice that would have made your path smooth, mm -hmm. smoother, what would it have been? When we started, my, my brother is does the, the coding. He's the lead engineer, and I do the user interface work. And I am in Ojai, California, and he's in San Diego. Mm -hmm. So when over the first year and a half, we did our um, we did our talking over the phone. Mm -hmm. And if I could go back, I would say to, for us to move on to a visual thing like a, a Skype or a 
you know, some, something with video. Mm. Because once we did that, mm. uh, it made our conversations a lot easier. For some reason, with the two of us, when there would be awkward silences, we would think, oh, the other guy's mad at me, or he mm. doesn't like this idea. Mm. And once we started actually looking at each other, then it just went much better. Interesting. <laughs> so that would, that would be the main advice I guess I'd give. Uh-huh, because you had whatever conflict of some kind at the beginning or it was just uncomfortable? Well, just sometimes, you, you know, you wonder. We, we weren't used to working with each other yeah. in, in that way. We weren't used to kind of um, batting ideas back and forth until we sorted it out. And is you your know? whole company remote? Yeah, so I have uh, my setup in my art studio. Mm -hmm. Diami has his setup in his home, and then we have a uh, office that is in in my town in Ohio, and that's where the customer support and the shipping takes place. Mm -hmm. And neither of us are there, mm -hmm. so that is run by another person, and and that pretty much takes care of itself over there. Uh huh. Awesome. So, um, what do you feel like your unique skill set is? Yeah, well, that's very particular to this software because I studied animation and mm -hmm. I really kind of nerded out on uh, stop motion cinematography mm -hmm. and, um, and the camera side of things. So I do yeah. a lot of photography. Yeah. So I really made sure that the software wasn't just an animator tool, but really worked with the cinematographers as well. Mm -hmm. and I made sure that that was part of it. Do you think that your success um, is primarily based on having um, the best product. What, uh, there's a lot of companies out there that have great products that don't end up becoming the industry, mm -hmm. industry leaders. What do you think um, had you, you know, be successful in like actually taking over an industry? In our in this niche, um, the their competitors were not. Um, they were trying to split the difference between trying to make something for kids and mm. maybe for elementary schools and they were trying to get that market. At the mm. same time, they were trying to get the pro market. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of put them in an awkward position where we just went right for the professional market, mm -hmm. which meant that the when a pro opened up our software, they would think, oh, this is made for me. Like this has the tools that mm -hmm. I need. And mm -hmm. it was kind of a no brainer for them at that point. Uh -huh. um, so we did a, a lot of little things right away that just sent signals to someone who had already been in the industry mm -hmm. that maybe was used to shooting on film and used to the older tools that when they looked at our stuff, that we weren't just making software that they had to learn how to use. We were making software that worked with how they already use tools mm -hmm. in a similar way, similar architecture and how they, how, where things were laid out. So I would say that in our case, it was the best, you know, it was because we made good software. I, would, yeah. I think that's why. And, you've, and, you, and you did that because, you were able to do that, you think, because you're naturally a great um, software designer or because you were building basically the thing that you would have wanted? The, I was building, well, that's how it started. We didn't mm -hmm. decide to make a, the software to sell. We made it from, from my personal work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something I'll be talking about in my, in my talk today is, is how it actually evolved. And it was really just my tool. Mm -hmm. And then there was a moment where the technology of the cameras, like the DSLRs, the Canons and the Nikons, they hit a, they hit a point where they became perfect for shooting stop motion. And we already had a version of our software that I was using. Uh, and so we decided to kind of jump on it and put the two things together uh -huh. and then put it to market. So it was kind of like right place, right time. Right time. Yeah. Because your stuff is all designed to work with the DSLRs. Yeah, for the most part. You can yeah. you can use HD cameras and mm -hmm. you could use webcams. And so we, we make it so that if you are a, more of a hobbyist and you're really into the software, you could use it. Mm -hmm. But all the movies and most of the commercials and music videos you see are shot with um, Canon or Nikon DSLRs. So what do you feel like is um, your kind of personal cutting edge right now? What are you learning next? What do you feel like is the most important next step for that's you in, in your business? That's a great question because that's a really good question. I don't know what that is. It, mm. it might, sometimes I, I get the feeling that I really better keep on top of the camera, the, the ever-changing, uh, evolving camera situations because mm. they go through phases. Like right now there's a, there is a push to go with more mirrorless cameras because there's less mechanical things that mm -hmm. can go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so as a company, we do keep on top of all of that. Personally, I, um, you know, I mean, I'm still doing stop motion, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm someone who likes the old school ways of doing things yeah. and hands on. So I don't really know technolo technologically where I'm headed. I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm more of a storyteller and I like filmmaking and I like lighting. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was actually a bit rough for me to go from film to digital. It was kind of a big decision. I wasn't that excited about it. Mm. But 
it worked out on this one project that, that turned out to be kind of high profile. And, and I thought there was a lot of advantages to the digital stills, particularly for, for stop motion. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the next thing is. I'm not sure. And what about the next sort of like hurdle for the business? Do you think there's uh, like, is there another industry that you're going to take over? Or uh, is, there, is there more to get in terms of the, the industry that's already out there? Or? Yeah, I don't know if, if, I don't know if there's any market left, um, you know, for us, but um, I think the key will be to keep the product relevant and price correctly so that there, you know, we can keep other competitors away. Mm -hmm. I think that that's going to be the, the key is, and we already are seeing that there's competitors coming out of the woodwork who are basically copying our, our our layout and everything, mm -hmm. and, and and selling for um, for much less. So we try to make sure our customer support is really top notch, yeah. and that we're really responsive to any kind of issues. If you're on a set and you go, oh my gosh, we're having this problem, and someone calls in, we make sure it goes right to either Diami or myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think, you know, um, just keeping it keeping it on top of the like camera technologies mm -hmm. is is sort of our biggest you know, active thing we have to keep doing. Yeah, interesting. Most of the people that I interview here are not, uh, you know, basically titans of their, of their, of their industries. You know, they haven't, they haven't like won the game. They're all trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to get a toehold. And it's an interesting different perspective. It's a small game, Obviously. you know, it's a, it's a small Obviously, game. Sure. Well, when you think about your career as a whole, um, and you know, maybe whatever, 20, 30 years from now, and, you, and looking back, what, what do you imagine you'd like your legacy to? Have been you know I don't that's a really good question for me right now because I've um, you know I've had time to make little films and, and work on different projects and I, I don't know I think I'd like to I have more films in me so mm -hmm. make more films and I don't know if they'll be animated or not but mm -hmm. I you know I I I like to think of myself as a filmmaker so mm -hmm. I guess doing some great storytelling and, and interesting filmmaking that's you know that's I guess is the thing left for me at this point yeah Cool. And so we've called this thing Modern Entrepreneur to try and um, figure out, you know, through the, through the perspectives of a bunch of entrepreneurs, what's uh, unique about doing business in this time. Well, definitely, um, I mean, without saying, the internet made our business possible. Um, you know, we didn't go into retail. Mm. Uh, and that's something we thought we might do. And, mm. and that's something I'll talk about today in, in, the, in the lecture is like our, how we were on the fence about putting our boxes into retail. Mm. Uh, you know, so taking full advantage of, of the internet and being able to reach as many, you know, people as possible, I guess, that's the big, you know, that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. Probably has been for a while, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, and making sure that we're, yeah, that people can find us, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, we're really lucky with stop motion is very kind of um, obsessive. The people that do it, they really fuss over their tools sure. and they talk to each other about their tools. Yeah. So we've really um, had that advantage that it's already uh, uh, like a word of mouth kind of. A hyper word of mouth, yeah. yeah. What do you think about this? Um, today has got to be different I mean, I don't know anything about the movie industry, okay. um, except for that I watch them. Um, but I would think that today has got to be different in terms, uh, from the perspective of a movie maker, mm -hmm. about how you get attention on a project. Mm -hmm. um, how, what, how is it different you know, today than it was five years ago? You know, that is an area that I cannot say I know anything about. Mm. You know, I've worked on movies, but I've never worked on the on that side of it, on the promotion mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been, you know, more of um, on the technical you know, mm -hmm. side, getting it done and just, you know, focusing on trying to make a good product. Yeah. I, I really have no, I don't know anything about Nothing. marketing. It does seem like it, is, it gets so much more competitive. There's more films being made. Mm -hmm. There's definitely more animated films being made. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it's hard to find money. I think it's hard to, to get these things off the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, I have plenty of friends who have, had scripts that are, you know, get years into development and then end up, you know, then not the not projects fall apart. Yeah. So I, that's a little scary. I personally would probably never make an animated feature film because they are long and, and years of your life. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah. And even when I was working on The Little Prince and we only had to do about 20 minutes of the movie. Mm -hmm. And even about halfway through that, I was kind of 
getting a little bit to the breaking point. So, <laughs> questioning so your life choices. I was, I'm amazed <laughs> at the directors like uh, Mark Osborne, who directed the entire Little Prince. You know, it was his project, and I was just amazed at his ability to just weather the storms for so long. Mm -hmm. How many um, years? I, I think he must have been around three or four years mm -hmm. in the making on that. Mm -hmm. You know, from all the script and development, and then finally going into production, and yeah, you know, and then you do the sound. You know, it's it's long. And and one of the problems with that. I feel is that it it goes so long you can it's easy to lose your perspective yeah right or oh I want I want to add you want to add more bells and whistles because mm -hmm. you've got you're bored you've been looking at the same script for so many years yeah that's one problem and then the other side is um, so that's a temptation as a director but then you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen and you might have producers coming in and out and they have different ideas and and yeah. they might say oh I want you to pull this part out or put this in and so it's just you know, you could be, you have parts that you would fall in love with and then, you know, Disney says, oh no, this has got to come out yeah. or whatever. And because there's so long to look at it. Yeah. Not like a live action, maybe, you know, an indie live action film, you you shoot for a couple months and then, you know, you edit and you don't have time to, you know, and money to keep reshooting things. Right, and, just know. get it done. So I would probably steer clear of, of that world. It, it seems pretty intense. It's a little, little much for me. I'll, design the software and make some little films. <laughs> awesome, well Jamie, I appreciate you coming. Hey, this thanks so really much for having great. me here. Yeah. It's really nice. Really fun Perfect. to have you. Would you uh, sign our wall? Absolutely. Thanks. <laughs>